Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I want to share how I painted this small cherry blossom painting. But before that, let's go over the composition and values as usual. So here's my value sketch. I like always use the rule of thirds. So dividing the sheet into three parts and then placing your center of interest in one of these intersections. In my center of interest, I usually place the lightest lights and the darkest darks next to each other. And that uh, creates even more contrast and draws the viewer to uh, this area. And everywhere else, like in the corners, I try to keep everything loose and soft. You try to plan a pathway for your viewer. Usually you would want to plan it as if your viewer enters from the bottom of your picture and then there is enough uh, interest that the viewer stays focused uh, on one area in particular but then there's enough interest in other areas of your picture where they can enjoy your painting and uh, kind of travel through it and then leave from the top. So the process that I described about providing the eye pathway might be more applicable in landscapes, but you can still use the same composition rules for any painting, even um, such a simple as this one. And uh, now let's move on to the painting process. Um, so I've already painted the middle of the flowers, uh, just wet on wet, some olive green and quinacridone sienna. And I just want to keep them soft, so I did that wet on wet. Now I'm painting the flowers and I'm making sure to soften the edges because I'm going to be doing negative painting later with a darker background. So if the edges of the flowers are already hard then once we put the background on top it's gonna show through you know with watercolor you have to um, keep in mind that the layers show through because of its transparency so I am making sure to keep some of the edges soft where I want them to be later lighter than uh, the background which is the case for most of them. I did not use a masking fluid, so for the middle of the flowers, uh, in some places I, I'm just careful to leave uh, the whites in the middle, and in some, in some cases I use white gouache. The color that I'm using is called Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. I use it for the flowers and I like it because it has three different pigments, but if you don't have it, you know, no worries, you can just uh, mix up your own, like I would probably use ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and uh, probably burnt umber to, to mute this mixture a little bit. And even in this painting, I don't just use this uh, moon glow color all the time. I make it warmer with uh, quinacridone sienna or burnt sienna. In some cases, I add more alizarin crimson to make it look more pinkish purplish i don't think the color even matters as much you could use a different you could use um, paints gray mixed with um, alizarin crimson or some purple and the most important thing is uh, the tonal value here So I've, I've started the negative painting here and I am making sure that the background is darker than the flowers. Again, some edges of the flowers I do keep very sharp, especially where I have my area of interest in the top right corner. But if you see on the left, I'm actually keeping those edges fairly soft uh, because I want that area to be 
uh, quite loose and empty and just have just be full of space and air for the viewer to be able to glance over it and uh, move over to the area of interest. Another interesting thing about this negative painting is that you do have to paint your details from the very beginning. So I, I painted the flower details from the start and then you add the background. So it's a very different technique from doing washes. Like uh, usually you would do a first wash where you paint the light then then second shadows and then third would be details here you start with the details and then you add the darks and, and your shadows And in some uh, areas of the background, I realized I don't have enough uh, dark values. So I'm going over the background and adding more uh, darks. And that's something you need to judge for yourself in your painting. And what helps is stepping back a bit and looking at your painting a few feet away or turning it upside down and seeing uh, what's missing with the composition. Once you, once you turn your painting upside down, you don't perceive it as realistic anymore. It's more abstract for you. So that also helps uh, to determine what's missing, where to add some darkness, what looks uh, spotty or uh, patchy, or where you need to bring some of uh, uniformity in, where you need to add details. Of course, you have to be careful with it because watercolor doesn't like when you go over it too many times. Um, so I, I pre-wet the paper and add the paint so that um, it's a seamless transition. There's no hard lines in the background. decided that there isn't enough detail in that bottom flower or enough value I guess so I just go over it again and in the end I just wanted to spray some uh, white gouache to add some more noise uh, more detail uh, just to add some fun and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and uh, see you soon with the next video. Bye.